Hello, friendly AA. I take it it stands for amazing Apple. You know, you see, you said, right? So do we move on from Pulse Chain? No, this is what's going on in the Pulse Chain community now is it's, it's specifically to do with it's a hex issue and the lockup issue because people who came into hex, Richard Hart's community, the bootstrapping, the belief, it comes from everyone joining for his store of value narrative. Number go up. <clears throat> um, basically locking up your money, long-term gratification. <clears throat> That's where everybody's bootstrapped from. However, it's now evolved to other things because Hex can't keep growing and the price is down as well. Whether it wants to or not, the product market fit is in there. So you got to remember from my perspective and your perspective, right? Yeah, if it was still just Hex, I guess you could say, well, you know what? There's probably better bets to take. There's probably better bets to take. But it isn't just Hex. There's a Pulse Chain ecosystem. There's 170, 170 content creators. There's 200,000 people, man. There's 70 content creators. There's all these Pulse Chain altcoins, your Tropa ecosystem, Tangang, Hexibastard. 9mm exchange, all these other things moving, the aliens, it just everything, right? There's a lot of other things going on here. It's bigger than just that one thing. But this thing just, it talks about, look, it really, if you look at it, all it comes down to is the fact that crypto, crypto's its value add is not nice because it's, 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 it's too accentuated, it's too parabolic, and we're trading attention spans. That's the issue. The whole issue is that coins don't go up enough for you to like rely on them. So now if you're like in a hex stake, you're like, well, it's binary. Do we either make it or do we not? And then most people might say, well, I don't want to put myself in a binary situation. If I don't, I'd rather just take a bet on something else or just stay liquid. That's what, uh, that's what we're talking about in this hex Kareem issue. Uh, it's not about, it's not Pulse Chain itself. Remember, Pulse Chain's evolved. If Pulse Chain had not even been launched and nothing was around. Uh, yeah, like I said, you, you probably think, well, you're probably bearish on it. Maybe you're like, well, there's probably better bets, like I mentioned. There's other things to do, but uh, there's more now. Uh, <clears throat> also, if you want to look at valuations going forward, you're thinking about the number of people who will join in. But you know as well from the liquidity linking, if they join in, they don't have to stake long term. They just have to believe in one of the coins. Right, Pulse Chain is a layer one, 20x to flip Cardanzo. Right, Pulse Chain also 10x to flip Bitcoin Cash. You know, maybe people come in family long term mindset, maybe they like Hex. Hex is the first coin. Maybe people come in and they like Pulse X, buy and burn. Right, it's the buy and burn, right? It's over 4.5% of the supply total bought and burn. It's uh, keep, it keeps ticking along, you see. Or maybe they come for incentive token, right? They like the, the, um, the incentive token part of that, that's possible. Remember, there's the meme coins, but meme coins can't exist without Pulse Chain succeeding. They all go up, right? It's kind of like if you're betting on a city, let's say you could bet on a city, you can't just bet that the schools are going to like fill up with children. You can't just bet that without betting that the hospitals are going to be filled up too and uh, buildings are going to be erected. You see what I mean? You can't just bet on one thing. It's it's the overall health. Yeah, see what I mean? It's like if, if you're sick with a virus, you can't just bet that your throat's going to feel better. Because if you're better, okay, your sinus is going to get better and your muscle aches are gone and you're not drizzly anymore. You see what I mean? They're all part of the same thing, what we call the risk curve. So, you know, I know you've said, do we move on from Pulse Chain? No, I still think I still think it's cheap. You, anybody can do whatever they want. I, I know it's cheap. I know it's cheap. Don't know I think. But look, it's up to you, right? How much risk do you want to allocate to any of these? Everything's along the risk curve. Everything is along the risk curve. And look, you will find people who will buy expensive coins and they'll go up another 2x and they'll crown themselves kings, kings of the kingdom, champions. You will hear that. But... Did they make the right move? Well, you know, in some people's eyes, and I'll play some nice, gentle, let's play some Pokemon music just to... I wanna be the very best no one ever was. So if you want to be the best, right, you have to take 
the best strategy, which is buying low, selling high. And that's that's the aspect that you need for basically everything you see. But then you're always, you're always going to be wrestling with people who buy high, sell higher, and, you know, they make their 2x or their 3x, and they'll, they'll keep sticking to that. And they'll say, well, you know, if I'm making money, I'm making money following trends. But then if you follow them long enough, right, they'll actually stop talking to you most of the time because what you'll find is they're just hot for a specific season <clears throat> and they don't have a proper filter. A lot of them just fluke it in something. Because when you're buying high, you need a lot of suckers around you. And if you're relying on suckers to buy like after you, what they call emotional money and things, if, you're, if you can constantly rely on that by continuously buying high, that's what you're doing, right? Uh, you'll be very disappointed because the suckers, it's really hard to predict the exact price point and the exact time when the suckers are going to come in. It's really hard. In crypto, we've got the four-year cycle, hopefully, to continue. We can maybe use some correlations and maybe we use, oh, the Russell 2000 breaks up or whatever it is, the global liquidity index. You can throw those in together, but it doesn't necessarily, uh, it doesn't solve for everything, does it? Because if you're buying high to sell high, relying on those suckers, you got to think about what you're doing. What you're doing is you are the food for everybody else when you do that. And, you know, of course, even if you think you bought low and it drops again, you feel like you're the food. Like, for example, in Pulse Chain, right, you think 50% below day one sack, it's not cheap enough. Okay, it drops again. You see, you can go through all of these, but um, if you look at these big fat zones, on average, looking at the markets with this lens of buying low, selling high, or st staying in undervalued and waiting for supply to get chewed over time and the market to finally wake up to itself. I know it sounds gambly, but that's that's the game, man. Because the game of markets is it's kind of like every month you start the clock again. It resets. It's like every month, can I pull out yes or no? It's, it's literally yes or no. And here's the thing, right? If you were to make an Excel sheet and you had, let's say, every every month you would make a new Excel tab, and you would mark it with either a tick or a cross, a green juicy tick or a red fat cross. And if it's hit your price target, you get a tick. If it's still in the poopy zone and it hasn't hit your price target, you get a big fat cross. Well, if you look at you know everything that you've been holding and everything else for uh, altcoins and everything, and just the whole ecosystems out there, everything has been getting a cross for literally 24 months in a row. Nothing has hit the sell targets. Nothing, right? You might give Soilana, for example, green ticks, but people in Soilana, no one's selling here. They're all saying, oh, it's going $1,000 plus. No way I'm selling here, right? It could stop right now for all we know. Sol ETH could have peaked right now. We could be looking at it right now. It faked everybody out. You see what I mean? These, the, so you never really know. You never really know. But I always tell, man, I always tell everybody, you got to think about the believers and the non-believers as a ratio. Okay, if you're buying high, if you're actively feeling a good by buying high, you're, you are a non-believer. You're a non-believer. Non-believers get wrecked. We know that. Statistically, buying high, you know, I'll always share this stat on stock market. I'll never forget this stat. People who buy low in the stock market, like if, yeah, they put moving averages, right, for, uh, for long-term moving averages. People who are buying, on average, under the moving averages, right, the stock market average returns, like, you know, let's, let's just say 8%. Buying under the moving average, you're getting like 11% return. Buying above the moving averages, which is buying high, you're getting 2%. Ouch. That's wild, right? You're getting a 2% return. That's for the stock market, S&P 500. It'd probably be, it'd be way, way, way worse in crypto because not all the coins come back. You see, not all stocks come back either, but you can bet on the S&P 500, right? So don't forget that stat, man. That's a big, big, big stat. You get 11% buying low. You get 2% buying high. 2%. See, but, you know, that, that's a long-term study as well. Just to give you, like, the caveat. That's, like, 100 years of data, and you're looking through all these periods. Because in crypto, man, if someone buys high and makes it 2x, they're like, sweet, you're on nothing. I'm, on, I'm 2x up on the board. So, yes, I'm not giving up. Uh, everything is still, like, look... People ask me sometimes as well, when would you actually give up? Uh, firstly, never give up. But secondly, you have to just accept whatever price there is. There's no like giving up. It's like, well, hey, Ethereum, you are now $13,000. Oh, Pulse Chain, you're only 2x day one sack. Okay. I was thinking like maybe 10 times higher, but you're only 2x day one sack and Ethereum's $13,000. All right. This is the price I get. 
you know? So I don't see that as, oh, win or loss. I don't see it like that. There's no expectations. It's just I bought something low and I'm waiting for the market to show me what expensive is. I don't know what expensive is, but we're just looking for this time period to basically grace us where non-believers come in and push us to hopefully higher prices. Hope that explains a lot, friend. Uh, you are an amazing apple. It's a bull run. I love your username, by the way. Catch you soon.